The expression game on has special meaning for tennis star Maria Sharapova. After all, she's just getting back into the game after being exiled for a drug violation. Tracy Smith has her story. <laughs> Maybe it shouldn't be so surprising and I'll do it. that Maria Sharapova looked so good at this year's U.S. Open, despite an early exit. And emotions we've never seen before from Maria. After all, and Maria Sharapova. Maria Sharapova sinks to her knees. She's a five-time Grand Slam champ. But remember, just last year, I made a huge mistake. Things looked pretty awful when Maria and something called meldonium became front page news. I don't want to end my career this way, and I really hope that I will be given another chance to play this game. 2016, you get an email saying that you failed a urine test. Mm -hmm. What went through your head when you opened that email? Oh, gosh, I... Um... I had no knowledge of what it was. I thought it was a mistake at first because I had been getting certificates of approval for years on this product and I never had a problem with it. And then I realized that it became banned on January 1st and I had zero knowledge of it. In your gut, what did that feel like? I think in the beginning it was disbelief. I, I think the first thing I thought of was how could I not know? How, how did I not have this information? How could you not know? I, I still, I still don't know. <laughs> I still don't know. Meldonium is listed as a performance enhancing drug. Sharapova admitted she'd been taking it, but for health reasons. She blamed the International Tennis Federation for failing to make sure players knew which substances were banned. After a number of hearings, Sharapova was suspended from playing tennis for 15 months. Do you feel like you were being made an example of? I don't want to believe so, but I do question it. That sounds like a yes. Um, I, I will never know. So, you, you know, I just got off a plane and the sun is in my eyes. Oh, no excuses. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't played in a while, too. Uh -huh. <laughs> now, at 30 years old, ah, I'm not even going to touch that thing. <laughs> she's trying to stage a comeback. So you never question coming back no. or not? No. I think I was, I, I, knew, I knew that I'd come back uh, no matter what the time frame was. It's the latest chapter in a true rags to riches story. Maria Sharapova was born in Siberia, the only child to Yelena and Yuri. Yuri played tennis, and from age four, Maria did too. Early on, her talent and tenacity were obvious. Just look at this picture. But tennis schools were limited in Russia. So in 1993, Maria and Yuri moved to the U.S. And when you came here, your dad was scrambling. Yeah, my father had $700 in his pocket, rolled up. It was enough to get them to the famed Nick Bolateri Tennis Academy in Florida, where Maria earned a scholarship and formed a plan. Even from that young age, you wanted to beat all the other kids. I did. You know, I, I grew up being... The skinniest girl. I grew up being an outcast. I grew up someone um, from another country in America, playing with kids that were mostly from the United States. Um, I didn't speak the language very well in the first year or two that I was there. So I always felt like I was by myself. Um, but yet I was there on a mission. I was there to do something. And my mission was really simple, and it was to beat everyone that I was playing against. As a teenager, Sharapova was competing around the world a standout who was tough to ignore for many reasons. When did you first realize that you, what's the word, grunt? Right. <laughs> I think when I came to America for the first time and I, and I saw how many children around me were grunting and that I was one of the other children that was grunting on the court. Come on. Your noise that you make is unique, yes. Definitely louder. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Have you tried no to doubt. control it? No. No, you can't control it. No one has really asked me to, so I have, to be fair, I haven't really given it a try. <laughs> if the grunt was attention-getting, what Sharapova did at Wimbledon in 2004 was downright stunning. 
At just 17 years old, she defeated two-time defending champion Serena Williams. When you went back to the locker room, you overheard Serena? Yes. What was she doing? Crying. It was that loud that you could hear her? Yeah, definitely. It was a moment where you almost, you, you just feel like you don't want to witness. Sharapova shares that moment in her new autobiography, Unstoppable, which mixes her life story with her frank opinions, like how she thinks Serena fakes her falls on the court. Do you honestly think that she acts when she falls down, that that's not real? I, I think some of it isn't, no. Why do you say that? Um, it's, it's a feeling. It's a feeling when you're playing someone across the net, um, just based on experience. You said Serena and I should be friends, but we're not. Right. Not at all. <laughs> right. For the record, of the 21 times Maria Sharapova and Serena Williams have played each other, Maria has only won twice. Still, Sharapova's a superstar, ranked number one in the world in both 2005 and 2007. She's the second highest paid female athlete in the world, right after Serena Williams. It seems like you have the perfect life if you, you know, <laughs> look at your Instagram account. I think everyone has a perfect life on Instagram. On Instagram? Yes. So what's missing? <laughs> oh, um, I don't think of what's missing. I Long always think of what we can add. She'd eventually like to have a family, but now isn't the time for a boyfriend. Have you had a love life? Um, here and there. Nothing serious. Nothing serious? No. No. I think last year was probably would have been too selfish and difficult to to have something serious. What do you mean? Just through the process that I was going, I think it was it would have been difficult to just to have someone that's in your life in one of the most challenging times in in your career to just kind of come in and <laughs> be part of that um, that hustle and you yeah. don't think you'd be fun to date over the past year? Is that what you're saying? <laughs> I'm not sure, but I didn't really give them much choice. So. <laughs> Just last week, Sharapova won the Tianjin Open in China, her first title since the suspension. She knows she won't win every match, but Maria Sharapova isn't one to ever feel defeated. And so many remarkable achievements. Five-time Grand Slam winner. Yet forever, you're going to be linked to doping. Is that maddening? Um, I think... It's unfortunate. Um, Come on, it's more than unfortunate to you. It's got to be no, more than I, unfortunate. It doesn't take away from anything that I ever achieved. It doesn't make me feel that way. I know how hard it was to accomplish um, what I did and the achievements that I had, and no one will ever be able to take that away from me.